Hi everybody, my name is Casey Wynn and I am currently at the Hyatt Regency a, at a hotel. I'm attending an event tomorrow. We are in Houston, Texas. It's a major city in the state of Texas and here with me is Kyle Ray and he not only is he an actor, a producer, a filmmaker, an entrepreneur, but he's passionate, borderline obsessed with cryptocurrency investing. And he's actually speaking at the event that we are I am attending tomorrow. And I'm really excited to hear your talk at 10.30 a.m. 10.30. So, Kaya, thank you for taking the time and sitting down with me. I understand you just flew in like an hour ago. Literally. So I really do appreciate you making the time to sit down and talk with me. With that, um, for our audience, can we get a little background on you? Uh, where do you want me to start? Like from childhood? Why not? Childhood, uh, the, the simplest version. Childhood to where you are now. Okay. So I grew up on uh, a farm in the middle of nowhere with no internet, no TV, no nothing. Internet wasn't even around yet. Um, five brothers, four sisters two family uh, working class uh, parents and didn't really have a lot to go on growing up other than books mm -hmm. and games. What kind of books? Whatever we want to read, really. Okay. So for no me it was like it. fantasy books, really, Dungeons and Dragons, okay. role playing. Did you move out of there after you got older? I moved out at around age 20 and I moved to Portland, Oregon and I lived there for four years. Uh, I went to Portland to pursue acting and theater because it was a bigger city. Okay. And it was still a little too small. Like, I feel like I've always had too much competition in my life. So that's how you got into acting, was you pursued the theater aspect in Portland? Exactly. How did you feel? I'm interested how you felt when you, Portland was still too small for your acting career. What did you do? How did you feel in that moment? Um, well, it wasn't like a particular moment. It was just a gut feeling that people don't understand the way I think. Okay. I'm highly competitive, like to the extreme competitive, mm -hmm. even within myself. And I felt like Portland was just too chill for me. Did you move out? And I just took everything that I owned that I could fit in my car and just put it on my car and drove down to L.A. That's how you got to L.A.? Yeah. I want to pick on that for a second because... You're around 24 now? You said around four years. 24, 25? I'm 37. No, no, uh, then, back <laughs> then, when you moved to L.A. Uh, yeah, about 24, 25, something like that. That's a huge move. And it's a gutsy move. You packed everything and you got in your car and drove to L.A. You knew your destination, but some people are not that brave to make that move, even if they desire it. It's something they want. They're too scared to ever do it. How did you feel? Were you scared at all? No? Not really. Not like, at all? I already made up my decision. So when you, I say I'm going to do something, and I envision it in my head, because I read so many fantasy books, I was kind of just in my head all the time, and mm -hmm. I would picture things. I'll say, okay, I want this. How do I get it? And then I'll figure out how to get it, and then I go get it, and then, okay, that was great, but now I want this. <laughs> so so kind of just like leapfrog. What my would your advice be for people who aren't as straightforward with themselves if they want something to go after it self-discovery maybe figure it figure it out self-discovery read books about yourself kind of like isolate yourself and just think about why are you the way you are and what do you want and are you happy and if you're not happy wow. why aren't you happy just question yourself and everything and be 100 percent honest if That's you're not honest so if you're not honest you're not going to get results i appreciate that so you're in la you're pursuing acting. Is that how you got into filmmaking, producing? How'd you get into crypto? Uh, well, I've been in LA 13 years. Uh, I started as a voice actor, did a bunch of voiceover anime, but I wasn't booking a lot. And people say, hey, you look good for screen, so get into acting. For our audience, what's voiceovers? Voiceovers is anything where you hear your voice um, and you're seeing something like anime or. So you were the voice video. behind it? Yeah. And so you did that for a while and then you got in on screen? Uh, yeah, and then people say, you look like you should be on screen. So I was like, okay, well, I'll get into acting then. So then I was doing both of that. And uh, then it was just too hit or miss because even if you're really talented, you're still not probably right for this role. And there's a lot of people turning you down. And that, that wasn't really what affected a me. Lot it was of just. Uncertainty? 
Yeah, uncertainty, I don't like to waste time. So right. because I don't like to waste time, so I, I kept on pushing. So it was never a confidence issue with you? It's more of you were wasting more time doing this when you could focus on something else? Yeah, because I know what I'm capable of because of everything that I've done in the past. Every time I see something in my head and say I'm going to do it, and I think outside the box and it comes true, most people don't can do that but don't know how. How? So because I figured that out, I decided, okay, I'm not going to leave my my life and my certainty up to somebody else. I'm going to do it myself. So you branched out. That's so inspiring, though. <laughs> no, like you, you <laughs> chuckle, but I, I'm guilty of doing this sometimes, and it's something that I'm trying to fix being so young. I'm 22, and sometimes when I feel the uncomfortable feelingness, even though I know that this is the right way to go and I can advance so far it's a great opportunity I see something that somebody else doesn't see and I should grasp it when I get uncomfortable I'm not scared to admit that I lived the sheltered life in Texas I lived with my family and all of that so branching out on my own was new it's still new to me and when I feel the uncomfortable feeling I want to quit and fold but this past year, it's more go, 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 and I've advanced so far within the past three months doing what you did your whole life. My, my question is, is do you ever get that uncomfortable feeling, butterflies, uncomfortableness? Maybe in the beginning, not anymore. How, I know exactly what I want in life, and I know exactly you know, how to get it, and it's just task listing at this point. So, okay, let's go back to... You were wasting time in the acting and voiceovers. I, don't, I wouldn't call it wasting time. I would just call it um, uncertainty as to where your career is going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, leaving it up to somebody else to dictate whether or not you're good enough for that. And then climbing the, the social ladder of right. what value is considered. And it's not your own value. You're putting it in somebody else's hands, which can kind of, exactly. it really, really sucks. And so, is that how you got into crypto? You saw something? Uh, I mean, that was like the beginning, and then I got into like, I started writing screenplays, and I was like, okay, I'm going to make a movie. Mm -hmm. And then I had a really serious health condition where I was like auditioning across from a role from Leo DiCaprio, and I passed out in my car on a callback, oh. and I was like, this is not good. And then it started happening more frequently, and I didn't have health insurance, and I was, I was trying to treat it like I did everything in life. If you get sick, you just right handle out. it because, you know, five brothers, four sisters, and two two parents work a regular nine to five. You don't want to, like, go to the hospital because it's going to cost everybody. Right. So I was like, okay, I'm going to just get through this. And eventually I couldn't, and I ended up in the ER twice. And at that point, that's when I decided, okay, everything I'm trying to do is for myself because I never, everybody else always had money. I never had money. Mm -hmm. So I just want to go make money so I can be like them. And that's what it was up to that point. Making money. Yeah, until I almost died in the hospital and I realized, wow, I'm here alone, I don't have any money, um, I haven't accomplished anything, what have I done for anybody else? I'm just alone and this sucks. Mm -hmm. If you let me live, I'm going to flip that upside down and anything that I do in life, I'm going to give back to everybody else. That's so amazing. And then... It uh, it yeah. So what caused that was a near-death experience for you to realize like that. Like seconds away, like suffocating with full oxygen on. What was uh, that experience like in itself? Not the revelation that you had, but the near-death experience. Life-changing. I, I don't... A lot of people say you hop outside your body. Maybe you do. Um, if you get even closer and closer, some people actually die and they Go resuscitate them. Yeah. And they did hop outside their body because it's a spiritual thing. For me, it was like when you're suffocating and you can't breathe and everything just like sucking you into your head. It. Yeah, it's just I don't know how to explain it other than you know you're gonna do life. whatever whatever you do to let me live. I'll, I'll give it right back. Life. And that everything happens for a reason. I'm, so I'm very aware. How do you proceed after that? Uh, recovery took me years and years and years because you know physical pain psychological trying to work a regular job and still make it in the acting industry not being able to pay your bills getting overdraft fees from banks that don't mm -hmm. care about you it was just like it wasn't it was easy a struggle. and yeah. there was a few people there to to stick with me and help guide me hey read this book hey check out this spe the speaker 
and that was like the self-discovery that we talked about. Right. So you discovered something, and you're giving back to people now through everything that I do, pretty much. Which so. is your entrepreneurship. Um, on your site, when I did research, you help people build their brands and all of that. And yeah. then not only that, you help people learn about cryptocurrency. Uh, yeah, so kind of everything's interconnected. So how I think, mm -hmm. most people look at it like that, like direct. I see that. I see it over there. I'm going to walk straight there. Tunnel vision. You need tunnel vision, but first you need to look, you know, if I looked at it from here, I'd only see this much wood. Right. But if I look at it from here, I see the whole map. Right, from so above. Exactly. So it's kind of like that. So I've got a lot of skills in film and television. I've got a lot of skills in entrepreneurship. I I got offered six-figure salaries to do marketing for big corporations, but I didn't want to do it. Let's dig deep on that. Some a lot of people will take that. Oh yeah, my parents wanted me to take it too. You I was didn't. Like, mm -hmm. Why? That's I, like a little bit about me is coming out of college, I could have taken the easy way with my friends, yeah. the guaranteed starting out $50,000 a year salary, but I invested in myself and I'm trying to build my future towards the goals that I have. And that's a hard thing to do when you're trying to get up off the ground, off, off your feet, and your friends are bringing in a steady income, but then you, you gotta realize that that's living paycheck to paycheck too when you do the math. How did you reject a six-figure income to pursue what you want to do in life? What was the what, what was the mindset you had behind that? A couple of things. Uh, I didn't learn entrepreneur skills until after heart surgery. Mm -hmm. So before that, I was working at a restaurant, working nine to five, mm -hmm. hating it because I'd be exhausted coming home. So I basically served people my whole life. So I'm really used to like knowing how to help people get what they want and not get mad at me. But working at the restaurant, you looked at the clock a lot. I looked at the clock mm -hmm. a lot. And then that kind of led to like, okay, Dreading going to work. I don't want to work for somebody else and make anybody else money because right. they don't care about me, first of all. And I actually do care about people. Um, being, I'm like half introvert, half extrovert, mm -hmm. so I like to stick to myself, but then I like to go be social, but I don't like too much of one or the right. other. So um, I guess ha helping people out is really, you know, it came from the epiphany at the hospital, mm -hmm. and from there um, I just got too many skills in my head and I know too much information. That and you can share with others. Yeah, I don't tell this to a lot of people, and I guess a lot of people are going to know this because I'm going to say it right now. One, what is one it? Of my, one of my ways to pay for heart surgery because I knew I was dying in the hospitals, didn't know it was up, and I, I couldn't get health insurance because uh, that was back before Obamacare when they said, you have well, to. if you have a pre-existing condition, okay. we don't have to give you a health insurance. So I was literally walking dead man trying right. to figure out how I'm going to survive. So I wrote a movie, a really good concept, because... I've always had like this unique outside perspective. I made this whole concept, this whole movie. The screenplay wasn't great. I got coverage. Uh, coverage is basically where they grade the screenplay and tell you how good it is. Mm -hmm. I met some guy at a, pool, a mansion pool party. He pretended to be my friend. I gave him all my notes. I didn't have any contracts signed. He ran off to New York and they made $500 million uh, franchise out of my concept. So from there, I was like, okay. How did that, let's stop there. How, <laughs> how did... That had to affect you uh, drastically. Not really, because money to me is just money. It's a tool. Right. Most people, it's life or death to me. It's like I can always make more. If I can come up with a concept of one movie, and I have like 25 other movie concepts better than that one concept, if, if someone can run off with that and make $500 million, what kind of information in my head can I like leapfrog to that even more? So I actually use it... Like, I was angry for a little bit, but there's not really anything you can do because right. they've got billions of dollars backing them. If I even try to take them to court... You couldn't um, afford it. Yeah. So they'll just, and like, they'll, run me down. I'm trying to recover from heart surgeries. Whatever. So I'm just like, all right. You get back lesson. up and you do it again. It happens every day in Hollywood. All right. the time. It just happens. You just don't open your mouth. Just don't tell anybody your anything. Your mindset mind blows me. The way you're able... I would have been... I'm going to be honest with you, completely honest. I would have been bitter for a while to where it, it would have probably changed my life. You know what an artist uses bitterness to make more art? Use it as motivation. 
Yeah, so it's basically fuel. So it, without that instance, I probably wouldn't know what I'm capable of. Right. So everything is stronger. like... What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Bam. <laughs> Your heart attack didn't, but it made Bam. you stronger. <laughs> so let's get on to... Um, when did you first discover cryptocurrency? Bitcoin. Uh, crypto, okay. So... Let's head one, to the crypto talk now. One of my tenants in 2011 uh, actually was a hacker in the government tried to hire him and he worked for the government for a little bit to mm -hmm. like figure out security flaws in their stuff he's like hey you should check out bitcoin 10 bucks i'm like 10 bucks what is that like nerd money because he was a super nerd mm -hmm. he's playing like minecraft and i didn't like that game because the graphics sucked. so your initial reaction <laughs> was, was like what are you talking uh, about no nah, i don't have money to be thrown into that i'm trying to survive and make it an actor you your 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 uh, initial reaction is the same way a lot of people are going through right now completely forgot about it until a couple of years ago and my uncle my cousin has already built and sold two several or two businesses from ground up digital businesses and he's already cashed out over 10 million dollars um he was 4.0 at arizona state super smart guy now Very he's retired guy. and my my uncle um because they're all tech savvy mm -hmm. my uncle builds computers he's been doing it for years he's he like fixes computers uh, machines that work on your eye surgery. So he brought it to your So he, machine. yeah, he said a couple of years ago, hey, you should check out Bitcoin. You heard about it yet? And I'm like, actually, I did hear about it years ago. He's like, you should check it out. So you was, checked it out? And I was looking, because I'd already been doing years and years of online entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. marketing, hustling, trying to find a new client, trying to find another new client, keep on getting stuck in the same... Paycheck to paycheck kind of lifestyle. Yeah, and people not taking my skills seriously. Got, let's... I want to ask one question on that. You get tired of it. Um, the paycheck to paycheck. Well, going through self-discovery and, and researching like the most successful people on the planet, mm -hmm. you got to mold yourself after. If you want to give back, right? Right. Because my, my whole thing in life is I want to give back as much as possible. But if you don't have anything to give back, what can you give back? Right. So I was like, okay, I need to learn this, 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 this. So I spent like five, six years just studying online marketing, studying people like Tony Robbins, people like uh, Neil Patel. Um, maybe maybe you guys know who the, those people are, maybe you don't. Search them up. Um, Tony Robbins. Yeah, Tony, Tony Robbins, guys. super, super Look inspiring. Up, guys. Tony Robbins, Neil Patel is a SEO online marketing specialist. Um, pretty much people like that, I would just go, um, I read this book called Four Hour Work Week, and I'm like, wow, is this going to get me out of the I've, working nine to five? Yeah. Timothy Ferris. Right. That book changed my life. Everything about the way I think now is basically so, how do I maximize my time and how how are millionaires have the same amount of time in a day as a regular person but make so much more five sources of passive income so i was like all right all right let's try this so i got into online entrepreneurship i did drop shipping i did e-commerce i did online marketing i did social media growth hacking i learned all of this stuff but it's still it's like there's always someone a little better and someone who's got a little bit more money to promote themselves someone this someone that i was like all right Crypto is the way out because. So you, once yeah. you set your mind to something, you go yeah. straight to it. So I, what was I'm, your next move? Uh, cutting out all of the fat in my time wasted and just going straight for the money because crypto straight money and it's built on a gamification system. What's gamification? Gamification is where anything can be turned into a game. So it was a game when it first started. Right. Crypto was first around. Um, there's a history of crypto. Um, but what really makes sense is it was a couple people who said we don't like the way the Federal Reserve is like printing money on demand, manipulating the markets, manipulating everybody. People have to go through a bank where they can freeze your accounts where even if you have a hundred grand in there and you say I want it now, they don't have it. Right. It's like so people were kind of fed up with all the manipulation and corruption going on. So they kind of said let's make our own system. But let's make it like a game and a couple, couple really smart you know, tech people said okay let's make this thing called bitcoin so we still don't know to this day is satoshi one person or is it or a, group a group of people, people like anonymous and for people who don't know who satoshi is satoshi is nakamoto, nakamoto. is the creator of bitcoin and you say they didn't agree with if you want to take out 100k you'd freeze a your bank. bank 
Uh, right. It's not a degree, it's just the rules, the law. And so, are you saying if you had 100K in crypto, you could take it out instantly? I could take millions out. With no interference? The only interference is liquidity, and that means you have to have one or several exchanges set up in place knowing what the threshold is for the amount that the you can limits, withdraw. Right. So if you did have that much money, you might just want to be an accredited investor, but that usually means you have to file, file your taxes the year before and have a certain amount of six-figure money in your bank account to say, okay, we have enough to back us up. Right. Um, so if you're not an accredited investor, you're going to be stuck as a general population investor. Um, and that means your threshold for taking money out is going to be far less per day and per month. So technically, you couldn't go take out $10 million all at once right. unless you were on You'd like, have to find ways to do it, but you could still do it without There's always any, a way. Yeah, without any interference. One, or, well, without the government interfering. Well, the government's always, you know, Watching. they're not 100% got their hands in everything right now. Mm -hmm. But the thing is... Regul we can't fully adopt in crypto space without regulations. regulations because of regulations there's so many scams out there mm -hmm. so many scams and that's one that's one of the major issues with adoption right now and why scams. we don't have a lot of money in the market crypto? cap do you think that's why not many people are joining the cryptocurrency space is because of scams uh, all, several things scams one because once you get involved in a scam you're not getting any of your money back and that's 100% mm -hmm. You know, it's a complete loss for them. Complete loss. Right. And when people are dumping in hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands, you hundreds of thousands, and, and they're getting greedy or they just don't know and they're not educated, bam, gone instantly. So and that happened to me. I lost over 40 grand in crypto. In scams. How did that affect you? Just learn and teach people. Remember, if I'm going to lose a $500 million franchise, a couple 40, thousand dollars yeah. don't mean nothing to me. Right. And so what did you learn from that experience? Uh, what would you do wrong in that experience? With everything. Security wise, not the right research. With the crypto space being so new, it's kind of wild, wild west. Mm -hmm. I tried to learn from as many people as possible, but nobody has a full grasp of what's going on. Or the main thing in life where most people say is you got to focus on one thing till you're really successful and then branch out. I think reverse of that kind of like I dip my hands in everything. And so I feel like... And then now you focus on one thing. I'm a strategist by nature. At the age of 12, I was beating adults in chess. So now I'm like moving on to like four-way chess and 3D chess. So most people don't even know even how to play original chess. So that's kind of how I think. Um, what's killing the market? Scams, number one. Number two, uh, not controlling your emotions. Number three, not having a strategy before you go in mm -hmm. or a business plan number four not having a mentor that knows their way around the market number five not knowing what to expect okay so scams a big thing research the number one thing the number one scams thing. has got to be the number one thing the number two thing you said was emotions emotions can we delve deep on that what do you mean actually by you emotions? know what emotions might even be before scams what because, do you mean by emotions though um Crypto is a very exciting place, especially if you're seeing a coin go up 30, 40, 50% and then go down 5, 10, 100, 200, 500%. Right. Um, it's really awesome, especially last year when you see all this money coming in all at once. Spike in and everybody's like, oh my God, I have more money than I've ever had in my life. They, they and then they're buying it and then they forget all of the technicals, all the strategies. They forget technical analysis. They forget their game plan. They forget their strategy and they just, oh, I got to put in more money now. Boom. All of a sudden, you know, it people dropped. who knows what they're doing pulls the money out, right. tanks, and they're like, oh my God, I'm going to lose it all. Sell. And then they sell at a loss. And they keep doing that over and over and over right. until you have nothing. And I know I mentioned FOMO, so for those, FOMO is F-O-M-O, -O, and it's the fear of missing out, and that happens a lot, um, especially when they saw the big spike, there are a lot of people who are like, should I jump in, should I not, and what's your advice, control that emotion, or actually, well, it goes hand in hand. Don't invest in anything you can't afford to lose, oh, I forgot to mention that. What do you mean by that? If do you, you don't have a dollar to lose, don't put a dollar in to invest because you might you lose it. Would you advise to invest? Don't invest whole? anything if you can't control your emotions, if you don't have a strategy, if you don't know what you're doing in the market, if you don't know anything about trading. Like, everybody's just jumping in. And I'm gl kind of glad. At first I was like, what the heck? But I'm kind of glad that credit cards said, no, we're going to stop allowing people to buy crypto with credit cards. Why? Because... 
we got to think of this, everything's a chain reaction. If water is smooth and you take a rock and throw it in, you're going to get a ripple, a ripple, right. a ripple, and it gets bigger and bigger. Like the domino effect. S same thing with crypto. So everything is, is synced together, right? Mm -hmm. So if somebody maxes out a credit card, doesn't know what they're doing, doesn't have a mentor, a strategy, anything, doesn't control their emotions, they're buying in and they're hoping, they could get lucky and cash out and say, oh, I made one or five or ten percent, I'm good. That means, okay, you do kind of have your emotions under control because you knew to pull out. Pull out. I didn't in the beginning. You and didn't. I will fully admit all of my mistakes, and that's why I teach crypto, to show people what not to do as well as what to do, where you see all these other people, I made a million in crypto, come follow me. Now you made a million in crypto in a bull run, maybe getting you lucky on a couple. The bear run. Yeah, you got lucky. You so don't really know what you're doing. How do you know when you didn't get lucky? Consistency? When you didn't get lucky, you lose money. And so, I want to, I'm fairly new to the cryptocurrency space. I'm very excited to actually learn more through all the speakers, you, tomorrow. And I can't wait to learn more. It's like I'm, I'm a sponge wanting to soak in as much information as possible because it makes sense. The, with having control, peer-to-peer -peer control of your own transactions, privacy, and all of that, but it's, I know there's I know the general concept of it. I'm not afraid to admit that I I don't fully understand it yet, right? And so I'm excited to learn. But what would your advice be for people who are not in this space yet, have not taken a step in the direction, but they're seeing all this news on online? They don't know if they should jump in. They don't know if they shouldn't. They're hesitant. What would your advice be on that? Other than know what you're doing, have a mentor, don't let your emotions. What would your advice be to take the initial jump? If you don't know what you're doing, you got to, information is the key. Mm -hmm. Information. So where can they even learn if, their information? Information trumps everything because even if you don't know about controlling your emotions, that's information to know to control your emotions. Right. Information is the key to everything, and there's so many people that talk a big game, and I know some guy particularly who has like 75,000 followers on Instagram, and... Uh, We're not going to call him out. I don't call yeah. anybody out ever. Um, but uh, I'm um, listening. But, because um, karma comes back to you, mm -hmm. but I, I'm using this as a reference. Right. There's so many people that believe this person because they made a lot of good calls during the bull run, and they're using technical analysis, but... They use tricky wording, saying maybe that maybe it's going to go up, maybe tricky it's going to go wording. down. So it's a little cushion for them. It's no yeah. straightforward. So it's going to go up, it's going to go down. No, the difference, maybe. the difference between knowing a good mentor and investing in someone who's a good marketer is, is now it? they bought him a, a a really expensive car. I don't want to say the type of car because it it will be obvious, but a really really expensive car based off the crypto earnings, which actually wasn't crypto earnings, it was course sales. They have over 5,000 course sales at like hundreds of dollars. So when you take all that money, that puts them well over millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And they say that they're making a lot of money from crypto when they're only risking like a couple thousand dollars when they've already made millions off of course sales. So they're really like, I'm a marketer. I see these things. Right. And I know who's honest. I know who's factual. And I know who's a bullshitter. And that is you the one thing. You have a radar for that. I, my whole life is built what on... What people don't? That's why I'm saying, like, there's only a few people or a few groups that will tell you facts, no nonsense, and how can you decipher a fact from nonsense? I mean, I don't really know how to explain that. Facts from nonsense is... If you're going to find a mentor, really, mm -hmm. I suggest finding someone that knows everything and will teach you the bad things and the good and things. And the good things. We'll navigate you toward, during the bull run and the bear run and be consistent with it. I know how to make money going up. I know how to make money going down. down. Most people know how to make money going up, and they're still selling their courses from the last bull run to people, telling them basics, like the basics that All you right. can find on YouTube that you could find on, like, Udemy for 12 bucks. Great. Um, real strategists and real traders that have got real successes mm -hmm. will not will not, and I, I'll say this again, will not give their strategies to the public because it's too powerful. It's right. too powerful of information. And number two, they earned that. Right. So 
really good information you can't just get for free. You can hunt and hunt and hunt. You're going to waste time. You might follow the wrong path from wrong people giving wrong information. Uh, another thing is a lot of these people are good marketers online. And these, these marketers online are really good at like promotions mm -hmm. and selling you an idea. And then once you get in, um, they say, just you, follow huh? me so that you don't have to make the mistake. Uh. No. You need to learn the mistakes yourself. You can't follow, follow somebody people. and make a mistake. So you're advising people to actually learn, actually understand. But don't put in a lot of money. Make the mistakes with like a couple bucks, not thousands like you I did. You would say your safety cushion. Yeah. So, and a safety cushion is when you have a lot of money, you have a certain amount of money in your bank account and you save like three months in advance and put it on the side and then you take a couple your, bucks and yeah, just practice a, with a it. portion of it and invest it into cryptocurrency. And so um, I'm glad you brought that up because that was an advice given to me along with the mentor. Every single advice you've given to me, my mentors have given to me. And I really do appreciate that because it's like not many people would tell people like, hey, you actually need to learn it. Some people will tell you, hey, follow what I do and you're just I'm going in blindly. You know what I mean? And so, um, I really do appreciate that. I have one last question for you. What can we expect from your talk tomorrow? Uh, well, I'm only got 25 minutes on stage and my course is over 45 hours of content and I got another 30 videos coming. So, I mean, you're going to get one small fraction uh -huh. of a, a safe way to like um, invest in crypto. A safe way to invest in crypto. Yeah. Kyle Ray, thank you for sitting down with me and thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with our viewers. I really do appreciate it and I look forward to your talk tomorrow. Can I make a call out real quick? Yes. All right. Follow my Quora page because I answer basic crypto questions and you can go there and see just all my answers. I have a telegram that's public. I have Instagram and I throw knowledge bombs on there and if you do need a mentor, Come hit me up. I've got an online course, or I also train people privately, high net worth clients. So basically, I'm just making the rounds. And for anybody who's interested, I will provide all that information down in the description below.